everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NHL slate for Tuesday, November 7th. Uh, DraftKings was uh, very opportunistic, and they took advantage of the fact that there's no NBA today and built some contests with some pretty big uh, pretty big prizes. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen 100000 offered for first in a uh, DraftKings contest, and they have done that with the I want to say the the energy line, which is a 444. Um, and we're going to take a shot at that for sure. And in addition to that, the, the, the regular MME contest is paying 50,000 first and a couple of others that they threw in here. So we're going to do our analysis of the slate. Now it is an early look. And I know it's kind of tempting to um, ignore what, what I'm about to say, but this type of review is much more important to hone your process for future slates than it is to actually figure out who to play on this slate. Now, I know that's not what you came here for or whatever, but, and yes, we are going to go through the process in the context of this slate, but uh, it, it is much more important to, to follow, follow along the process of building these lineups as opposed to just taking the results of this and, you know, just plugging it in because, well, first of all, it's you know, seven hours, eight hours until games start anyway. Projections will change, lineups will change, or whatever. But this is going along with my 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 missive, my crusade, or whatever to actually try to teach people how to play DFS rather than just you know just give them the picks for the day. So anyway, I'm probably just uh, banging my head against the wall with this, but this is what I've decided to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, the team totals. And we're going to do that just to give ourselves an idea of what we think should look good. And then we're going to go into our actual sheets, which will involve individual players as well as the, the stack tool or stack, well, the stack rankings. And then we're going to build hand-built lineups using that information. Then we're going to go back to SaberSim and build two sets of lineups, one where we use the Sabre score uh, rankings, which is very, very good. I mean, it, it, it ranks lineups using a combination of correlation, upside, things like that. And then we're going to utilize the new contest simulation tools to maybe do a little bit better. I say maybe because, you know, listen, the jury's still out on how accurate and reliable these the, the contest sims are, even with respect to what they're trying to accomplish. But nonetheless, we're going to, Attack it from many different angles. Anyway, uh, the first thing is we're going to take a look at the team to totals tonight. And we have, let's see, is anybody over four? Let's look through. You'd imagine somebody be over four, but I'm not seeing it. The only thing, we have a couple of teams that are close. So Pittsburgh, 3.8. Colorado, 3.6. Um, what else? Rangers, 3.6. Tampa, 3.8. So no one's a four, but there's a couple that are close to four. But on a pretty full 10-game slate, my inclination is that the, the edge that you're going to have in playing the top you know, projected stack is not going to be high because it's not as if anybody is that huge of a standout. Um, there's nobody with an over a four total. And that's what I found is, is kind of separates the, the really good plays from – Kind of the smash plays that are going to cause some decisions to be made. Now, again, team total does not always necessarily filter down to, to to the you know to the players being good fantasy plays or daily fantasy plays, but usually that's the way it works. All right. So with that in 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 our heads, um, you know, let's see if according to projections we're going to be getting to guys from Tampa and Rangers and whatever. And I know this might seem like a long process, but again, this is what I this is what works for me. Um, um, so we're just going to do this. So what we're looking at here again are the sheets that are you you know usually available uh, for premium subscribers on the True DFS site. And for those of you that are here for the first time, and we, you're ranking them in, in a lot of very traditional ways. You know, right, you know, you could rate everybody by fantasy points. You could just rank them by points per dollar as well. But I have this other method. I call it Sheets Value Score. That's the closest I come to, to marketing, but. It's not even marketing, really. It's, that's the only way. To, it's the way I, I separate it from the points per dollar things. I just had to call it something. So, and what that does is kind of a formula which 
uh, incorporates both fantasy points and point per dollar. Most of the big you know, the big sites have their own like value formula. I have my own, and it's what I've you know it's what's worked for me as far as being a good indicator of overall value. And then ownership projections over here. So what I like to do is just kind of take a really just quick look at the individual plays. Now, again, it's not usually the way you're supposed to do things, but but in hockey, I want to just take a look and see if you get that correlation just visually. And what I mean is what we're looking for are players that are from the same team that rate really high, okay? And more, you know, to be more greedy, we want teams from the same team, or excuse me, players from the same team that rate real, real high that are also on the same line, whether it be even strength or, or power play line. Okay. Um, and, and again, that's going to be step one. Then we'll filter it down to the stacks and things like that. So when I'm looking here, this is what I see. Is that I see that McKinnon and Rantanen are rated one, you know, one and four overall. And they're on the same even strength line, the same power play line. And the also thing, the other thing that I noticed is that they're both really expensive. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get to them. And the other thing I see is there's no one else from Colorado in the top, you know, 30 listed here. And the next one is, is Kale McCarr, who's on the same even strength line and power play line. And he's again, very expensive. So they're not making it easy for you to get these guys. The next thing that kind of stands out to me is this is the presence of this cheapo here, this Alex Keylorn. Um, whenever you have a guy that's like 2,700 like this, that's rated highly near the top and sheet value score, it's usually a really, really strong play um, because sheet value score does tend to prioritize the higher salary uh, players. So when you do have someone cheap that kind of filters its way up here, it's uh, it, it's something to take note of. So uh, Alice Kimon is going to probably be a really good play, either as a one-off or as a stack. And the first thing I look at is to see if there's any other Anaheims that are in here, um, that are at least close. And I, I, I do see a Troy Terry as a second Anaheim guy. He's not on the same even strength line, but he's on the same power play line. So it's possible that Anaheim could be, if we finagle around the rest of the, the lineup, could be a decent value power play stack. Uh, next thing I see, Kucherov, Stamkos, Point, all these guys, again, on the same line, same power play line, very, very strong plays. Um, they're a little bit cheaper than the Colorados. Well, they're significantly cheaper than Colorados. So it's likely that it's, it's you know, it'll be a lot easier to get to them. Um, the next thing I'll notice is the Rangers, because I see Kreider and... Shubenadad and and Paner and Panarin, they're all on the same power play line as well. And then also Gustafsson as well. So the Rangers look to be just again, just, just glancing as the probably the best combination of of grading high and just and also has a shot to be able to get these guys in. Um, so that that's that's my take from just looking at these projections. So we're going to do one step before we build the lineups. And then that is going to be taking a look at how the stacks rate out. And, and again, I just completed this for hockey in the last couple of weeks. I've been, have had this for, you know, all the other stacking sports for a while now, like football and, uh, and league of legends, but, but for, um, for, for hockey, I've been just kind of lazy to get this done. So now what this is again, is this rates the teams, it rates the top five players of each team by various metrics. Okay. Um, it depends on what column you look at. So if you look at the raw stack column and, and search by that or filter by that, you're getting basically the five players that have the, 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 the highest projection that are on the same line of any kind. Okay. Um, whether that be a power play line even strength line or whatever. So there's that. And we're not doing it for four, we're doing it for four mans. We're doing it mostly for, for five man stacks. Um, okay. And if there are no for five man stacks, it'll put up a four man stack, but usually uh, 
usually you can get a five man stack. All right, so uh, when you rate these by raw stacks, you're getting, for example, um, Colorado is number one, which certainly doesn't certainly doesn't surprise us. Then Tampa, who we looked into, and we didn't even get to Pittsburgh really, or the Islanders. And the Rangers that we talked about have them rated, you know, maybe tied for fifth. Now, when you rate them by value stacks, now you're rating these by point per dollar. So you're taking the top five point per dollar guys that are from the same line for each team. So here you'll see that San Jose is actually the best point per dollar stack on the board. Um, and so that means you could either you know, they might show up as a real nice stack to complement uh, one of the ch more expensive stacks like Tampa or Colorado, et cetera, or maybe could stand on their own. And then you see Colorado and the Rangers, you know, the Rangers are now showing up in a couple of metrics as are Colorado. And then if you sort by column H, you have modified stack, which is essentially sheets value score. So now you're getting the top five sheets value score players that are from the same line. So here you're getting Tampa, Colorado, the same candidates, Rangers. So what you're seeing is that the Rangers are showing up in several different screens. So what I would tr what I would do if I were building a hand-built lineup is the following. Number one, I would, I would try to get a cheap goalie, which is what I usually try to do uh, anyway, and then probably try to play the Rangers – Big, uh, big stack with the Rangers, maybe get that cheapo from Anaheim we talked about, or maybe do a combination of, of Rangers and uh, and San Jose, who are the cheap, who are the value stacks. So let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see what we can do if we build a uh, a hand built lineup. Let's build it in the. Let's build it in the uh, in that thing. Uh, what's it called? The the energy line. The election night energy. Um, you see a bunch of guys that are injured here, which is a little annoying. But anyway, this all been factored into the price. So let's build. Let's 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 build a ranger stack um, with the guys that we mentioned. So let me just pull up again my thing. And the rangers, we rate them by. Now this is interesting. Which guys do we use? They showed up in a lot of different different ways. So let's start with the guys that showed up in most of them. So you have Kreider and Zabanajat are in both. Kreider and Zabanajat are in both. Zabanajat, Kreider. That's a question of how else you want to fill this in. Um, well, well, this is interesting. Blake Wheeler is 2,600. Well, let's just build, let's, let's take the guys that are the, you know, the, the top, uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, value stack, guy, uh, uh, sheets value score uh, stack. So we have Pan Panarin over here. And then we have Trocheck. Nice and cheap at 4,500. We'll put him up over here. Let me just see something real quick. Rider, the one. Yeah, all these guys are going to be on that first power play line, it looks like. That's why they're kind of showing up, and we could do pretty much whatever we want here. Um. So which is the fifth guy we want to use? I mean, let's take, let me just see something. Well, let's, 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 sheet up a second. Let's pull up the Rangers here by themselves. Um, throw check. I guess finish off that line with like Gustafson. I guess that makes the most sense. Now we play Gustafson. I mean, this is this is pretty cheap. It's pretty easy to get this. 
Let's put it. We don't even. We might not even need to put in the cheap gold. Let's just take a look. Let's re-rate these by sheets value score. See the goalie here. Saros, it's always, I always like playing him. He always faces a lot of shots and, you know, sometimes puts up a really good fantasy score and he's always cheap. So let's put these up here. Saros here. Now this is a, this is a lot that we can play with here at 4,900 if you want to know the truth. Um, you might, might even be able to play some, like, like a two man. You can't really play the Tampa's. But it's pretty easy to play the San Jose's. I mean, that's for sure. Let's take a look and see what those look like. Let's remind us of who our San Jose guys are that we want to play. Um, we want, oops. Hurdle, Duclair, McDonald, Eklund, Bramlin. I think we could play whichever one of them we want. Um, so let's go back to the overall rankings. Yeah. Let's just see which, which San Jose guys rate the highest, I suppose. I guess Duclair is, is the best. It's going to be all on the power play line. So Duclair, very easy. 3,700. I mean, this is amazing. This is, this is, these San Jose guys really make things fly here. Um, we could play, well, you could, you could, we don't, we might not even have to do this. We could, might even be able to play some Colorado's. It's really interesting. Who did the San Jose guys? Uh, We could play Hurdle. We could play Grandlands. We can get really greedy here. Just say. Um, hold on. Team. San Jose. McDonald, 2,700. This is nuts. Those are so cheap. And if you put in, you know what you could honestly do. I mean, maybe you don't even need to play the Rangers. Let's 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 have some fun here. Let's let's clear the fields, and let's just say that we want to just pay up for all for the for the top dudes. Okay, let's go back. Let's let's say that we want to play either the Tampas or the um or the Colorados. Let's not get greedy. Let's just. Let's just spend for all these tens. And that would be uh, points. That would be uh, Stamkos. I presume Kucherev. So Kucherev, Stamkos, points. You play these three, you stick with these guys. Even if it's just a three-man from Tampa, You can make that work, but you could even. Uh, do I want to play Hedman at six K? Do I want to play Nicholas Paul at forty one hundred? I mean, even even a four man, because of what you could do with these defensemen. I mean, you could play Hedman if you want. Because look what you can do. You, you play all these Tampas, and then you play these San Jose Cheapos and the Anaheim guy, for example, without even, without even a lot of stress. Who did I say I wanted? Duclair? Who's the other guy I said? Hurdle? You can almost do this just like this. Okay, so maybe you can't exactly play. Maybe you can't exactly play 
all of them, but Eklund, Granlin, Colonel Duclair McDonald. Um, so yeah, so you could you could play. Sorry about this. This is like really really interesting. What was the name of the Anaheim guy again? Kilborn. We could play him at wing. And then you could play Hedman if you want. You know, so you can do this. You could play all these these Tampas because of how cheap Duclair and this Kaloran guy is are, for example. Okay. So needless to say, building by hand, you don't even have to go down to the Rangers. You could play the Tampas, um, and you could play, you know. Whatever else, because of the San Jose and the Anaheim guy, you can play whatever you want. Okay, so let's now try to do a little bit better and let's go into Saberson. And what we're going to do is we're going to upload all of the projections into Saberson. And again, uh, Saberson is, I don't call it an optimizer. I'm at, I really like to call it, before they got into this contest simulation deal, I'm, it's kind of like a smart randomizer. You know, you, you put these projections in, it doesn't just give you, you know, what the median projection is, you know, the top plays, you know, take into account correlation, take into account upside and all this stuff. Like if you click on these guys, it'll have like a whole range of outcomes um, of, of not just what this guy's median projection is, but how it disperses. So when you run the, the uh, lineup builder, it, it will try to get you, you know, Sims, you know, their simulations to give you these results. Not to say that it's going to give you these results, but I'm, the lineups they're going to provide are going to be assuming these types of results. And you'll have two different guys with a 19.29 projection, which is, are, are going to look differently uh, in these distribution curves. That's probably a little bit too arcane, but that's that's what Saberson is doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to build 50 lineups using um, uh, the lineup builder. And we're going to rate them first by Saber score. But while that's happening, we are going to add the contest sim data to save us a little bit of time when we do that. What we're doing now is, um, is, um, is preparing for the sim run, where we actually compare our lineups to what we think the field might do um, in, a, in the contest that we're actually playing. So we're entering the the uh, the contest data for those two of those two contests, the election night thing and the MME thing. So that when we do run the the contest, since it'll have that data already. Okay. So first thing we'll look at is run five thousand lineups. Let's list in the top fifty, and it's rating them by saber score. Okay. So it's by saber score because it's a, and it's a large slate with uh, 10 to 50, uh, 50 K entrance and it's rating them this way. So the first thing I will notice is what the team stacks are. So 75% of these lineups are getting to Tampa, 25% the Rangers, 20% San Jose. So, so Saberson is taking this, you know, the same approach with its algorithm that I just kind of did instinctively, you know, that you could play the Rangers but you could probably also play Tampa as long as San Jose is kind of a part of it. The other thing I will also note is that I bet you that a lot of lineups they will be able to get the Rangers and Tampa together. Um, like, see this one, this has like kind of a Ranger one off with the Tampas, for example. Um, the next thing I'll look at is the stack exposure. So what I like is that the stacks that it's created without any assistance from me are the types of stacks that I like to play, like the five twos. I don't know about the five zeros. Those are really tough to get home. Um, you got to be really, really precise. So what I might do is go with these lineups, but what I could maybe just X out the five zeros. Okay. So I X those out and 
Now we're getting more of six, six zeros. Um, and then, you know, you can, you can cross these out too. I don't want any four zeros either. And so on. Do I want four twos? Even, even that I think is a little bit fishy. So we'll get rid of the four twos. We'll keep the, 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 the four two twos. And listen, it's only one line up with three twos, three, three, two, two. So we'll keep those in. But its majorities are really, really pure. And still, Tampa, Rangers, San Jose, a little bit of Philly shows up there. Um, now, the next thing that I, I might do before I enter these lineups is make this one little change here and make min uniques. Instead of one, make it two. It, it just kind of gives you, give you a little more uh, room for error. And when you do this, it actually is giving you more Rangers, which is very interesting. So more Rangers, more Tampa, more Philly, actually, and less San Jose, which is kind of interesting. So what I could do, I could upload these to my lineups or I could wait to do the contest sims, but we can go ahead and do this. So let's, let's, up the, let's put these in my lineups. And I already reserved these on DraftKings. Um, so we'll upload the file from here. And now we are saving all these. Well, right now we'll save all of these to both contests. So it's going to give me a duplicate of those. And so these are all changed now, I presume. So now what I could do, which I probably will, I'll download this file to DraftKings. Then we will edit the entry. We'll hit edit entries, upload these like so. So if I wanted to, I could just kind of leave these, you know, and I'll see what I got. Uh, wait, where is the hockey? Hmm, it didn't, uh, didn't do what I wanted it to do. Oh, I know why. But well, I haven't made, made this mistake in a while. Um, let's do this again. Let's, uh, again, we'll save these and we got a unique random save to contests. Oops, wait, save to my contests. Go ahead. Duplicate. All right, that should be okay. Why didn't it? Let's see. Edit entries again. Upload entries. Put these in. I, th I think this changed it. Uh, see, there you go. Now, now it changed all this. Okay, so that's, well, again, this seems like a lot we've done already, but there's more. Within the last few weeks, the or last month or whatever, they've added the ability to run your pool of lineups, your 5,000, against what you believe the field will do in the exact contest you're in. Remember, we added those contest sim settings there. So what we're going to do now is hit this button called Run Contest Sim. And what it's doing ostensibly is, is comparing your 5,000 lineups against, or my 5,000 lineups, against a pool of lineups that they believe, you know, the, the field is going to do, um, is going to play uh, based on the Sabre Sim ownerships. Um, and then it's going to rank your lineups in a, in a way that, you know, gives you the best ROI or the best adjusted ROI, however you want to do it. Like, for example, uh, you'll recall what these lineups look like now, your know, Rangers, Tampa, Philly. But now when we re-rank these, you see this thing show up, like in the MME, for example. When we click on, say, rate these by risk-adjusted ROI, which is what I like to do, you'll notice that the, the exposure is much different now. And now you're actually getting a ton of San Jose, okay? Um, and much more Colorado. And I imagine probably a decent amount of them together. And then uh, still Tampa, but it's really not getting as much Rangers. And I think the reason for that, again, is because the Rangers are probably going to be pretty highly owned. So what we're doing is comparing the chances of our lineup succeeding with what they're going to be owned relative to what the chances of the Rangers lineups are succeeding relative to what they're going to be owned based on the exact number of people that we think are going to be in these contests. So uh, 
this is you know it's a pretty decent uh, uh, advancement in, in, in lineup uh, in lineup analysis. Um, now the next thing I'll do like for this set as well, I'll look at stack exposure, which is good. We will take out again the three threes. See what this looks like. We'll take out the, well, we can leave some of these in. And now let's get us the question of what you want to do. You know, do, do you want to replace that, that first set of lineups with these? Do you want to play 25 of like the first set of lineups with 25 of these? The, 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 the fun thing about this is there is no right answer. I mean, I shouldn't say it that way. There is a right answer. We just don't know what it is. You know, we, we don't know really whether it's better to play these you know, lineups that are driven by the contest sim data as opposed to the lineups that are driven by, you know, the, the Sabre score data. And that's really what makes this fun is, is making these types of decisions. And this is where you can go and take a look and see what you feel comfortable with. You know, do you feel comfortable with 60% San Jose? Do you feel more comfortable on the other, you know, using doing it the other way? Um, uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these, but uh, there's another thing we're going to do in a second. So here, let's save these to my contest, but we're only going to save these to that MME one. Um, and we'll, we'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so it changed those uh, MME lineups, but now we're going to look at this again, specifically for the election night uh, build. So for the election night contest, they rated them a little differently, but you know what? The first lineup is still the same. So we probably end up going with that. So we'll save that one to the uh, election night by unique rank, save the contest. And now we will download these and upload and we should be good to go. Now, if it were 10 minutes till the beginning of the slate, I would say we'd, we're completely done until maybe we late swap a little bit later, which you probably should do. Um, but again, it's still six, seven hours from the slate. So these lineups are not going to be what we play, but this is the process. And uh, uh, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too arcane. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord on TrueDFS, uh, and that should do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.